Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, we're going to take a look at the, the double bundle Civivi knife giveaway for the Gentleman Junkies this month. We're going to take a look at the new Jack Wolf Knives Pioneer Jack, and then Dangerous Curves. <laughs> Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment uh, from this past week, and there were lots of them, was from Go Noistic. And he said, this was on my uh, procrastination pocket check. I did two of them this past week, and that's when... I'm waiting in the car at gymnastics or volleyball for my daughters. Now, uh, gymnastics, I, I cannot watch at all. Volleyball, I only go in for the last half hour. That's the good part. Uh, when they're not drilling, they're actually playing games. So I don't want you to think I'm an inattentive father. But anyway, I hang out in the car, get a little work done, and uh, shoot a video when I'm procrastinating. And uh, Go Noistic says, I pity the fool who would reach in for you sitting there. Lots of people getting jacked while sitting in parked cars on their cell phones these days. Just yesterday, two sketchy dudes in a tinted window car cruised several times around the lot I was waiting in. They were not looking to park. There were lots of open spaces. I had my Spiderco Matriarch and Yo Jumbo at hand to choose from if need be. Got to go with the cold steel tie pan uh, for more weight and width. Now, that was, uh, that was in response to which would you take, the cold steel tie pan, or the Spartan Blades Raider Dagger. So he was answering that. I had a bunch of knives in the car with me, and I just kind of went uh, went through them. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is, uh, yeah, remaining vigilant. I, I feel like I sit in my car quite a bit. Not only do I drive a lot in my day-to-day -day commute, and there is a lot of traffic here, uh, but I, I feel like I find myself waiting in my car um, uh, with some regularity and yeah it is good to be alert um pat mcnamara says five and 25 check check five yards out and 25 yards out when you're in your car and you're getting out in the parking lot just see who's around and see who could be on top of you um anyway good to be vigilant thank go moistic uh for relating and also telling that uh that little story it's good for us all to remain vigilant and that being said time to get to a pocket check In my front right today, I had one of my all-time faves, one of my all-time favorites here, the uh, AD, <laughs> the XM24 by Rick Hinderer Knives. Looks so nice in my new camera with that autofocus. So uh, let's see. This knife I've had um, for probably about going on 10 years now. I don't know. That's totally, uh, I'm pulling that out of a hat here, but uh, no, no, no. Actually, it's been less than that because I started my real serious folder collecting it, uh, 10 years ago in 2013 when I started buying Emerson's uh, with, uh, you know, with a little bit of disregard. Uh, don't be irresponsible, people. Don't be irresponsible. Uh, so I've had this one probably eight years. Uh, such a great knife. I love the size of the XM24. It is big. I don't find myself wearing it much in the summer. But as we come off of the summer months into fall and uh, start to wear pants more, uh, as opposed to shorts, that is, uh, this is riding more. This and other the other large knives. And I love the shape of it. I think that the choil, uh, oddly enough, I like the choil better on the Warncliffe design than I do on the, um, than I, than I, do with the choil free version i have the xm18 uh with no choil and uh, just in terms of how it looks and and what the vibe is uh, i prefer this it is a big work knife you do want to sometimes come up onto that uh, handle and get your finger up in that choil uh to do to do work so um and you're like you don't do work with those knives bob and i'm saying hypothetically you would want that uh, so love having this knife. It's also, by the way, just incredibly tactically sound. If I had to pull that out uh, to thrust or slash, it would be uh, a great knife to have. 
for that purpose. Okay, uh, today, in in um, the spirit of the knife that I'll be showing off uh, first up in State of the Collection, I had this on me today. This is the GEC number 72 Bullnose. Uh, I've had this one a long time. That's in uh, natural canvas micarta. And of course, I had to put a little fob on it. Love the fob on knives that I know I'm going to keep and uh, especially uh, clipless knives. Uh, this one, uh, Sodbuster or Farmer's Jackknife, sits really nicely in the back pocket. It's nice and light uh, and, and it's a chunker. It's got a nice handle to really grip onto and uh, open those feed bags and and uh, you know, prune those roses or whatever you're doing with this knife. Uh, if you're not a suburban dad, um, but just a great knife to hold on to, great knife to use. You got the uh, uh 1095 blade steel, uh, which patinas nicely. And uh, I was really looking forward to the Pioneer Jack, so I've been carrying this one quite a bit. And uh, today it was riding in the back pocket next to my bandana, so good to have there. Let's see, what's next here? Oh, well, of course, my fixed blade. Today, I had the Aaron Bieber 302. Let me bring this over to the knife cam. I love this knife. Uh, this was my birthday knife this year. This is a custom. Um, I had the, you know, sometimes I like to differentiate between a custom and a handmade knife that you're buying. But this I had done the way I want it done. Uh, that beautiful machine satin blade. Uh, 302 blade, which is kind of like a, 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 a clip point and a worn cliff put together. You got that real low slung point. You have a, uh, a swedge up here, which is hollow ground, a beautifully hollow ground swedge there. And then you have this nice uh, curve on the blade, um, uh, you know, gentle belly, but all very low slung. So you get the utility of a worn cliff, uh, but the but the profile of a clip point. I love this thing. Uh, but then, uh, or I, I should say, I love this blade, but then we get to the handle and um, <clears throat> he does this in a number of different materials, G10, and um, I've seen it with jigged bone, which is cool, uh, but I had to get his Sukamaki wrap, exquisite Sukamaki wrap. There's the white ray skin underneath and the black epoxied um, cord wrap here. And just oh, fits so good in the hand, so well in the hand. I love the way the Sukamaki grip feels. You have those alternating peaks and valleys. Your fingers just sink in, and uh, it, as I like to say, it stands to reason that samurai who definitely want to keep their swords in hand would use that uh, style of grip. Uh, but we have this awesome epoxy we can impregnate that lace with, so it's not going to move around at all. Uh, and then in my uh, pocket for emotional support was the Ocaso Knives Solstice, designed by Andrew Demko. Love this knife. Uh, this knife is definitely a gentleman's knife, but stout enough to be used uh, as a last-ditch defensive weapon if you need it to. Uh, and a classy last-ditch defensive weapon, it would be indeed. Uh, I have a carbon fiber one of these and then two of the titanium uh i gave i had two of the carbon fiber gave one to my dad he loved it so much um so uh what i'm trying to say is i i really like the carbon fiber it's super light and very strong deceptively strong for how light it is but i i like the titanium the best it's it feels really good in hand it's got the uh it's got the weight of the titanium just a little extra weight um makes it feel you know, just a little bit stouter. What an awesome blade this is. It's like a scalpel. It it, it has an actually pretty steep full flat grind, um, but then a pretty high um, relief edge there and is just wickedly, wickedly sharp. And at the tip, it does two things. It stays nice and sturdy. It doesn't get too thin at the tip, but also that tip is extremely useful for fine uh, cutting tasks. Um, so this thing is awesome and supplies quite a bit of emotional support with its amazing action. I'm always, I'm always impressed when a very light blade has drop shut action because that means it's 100% action and it's not the weight of the blade uh, dropping it back in the handle. 
So that's what I had on me today. What did you have on you? I had the XM24, had the GEC72 Bullnose. I had the 302 by Aaron Bieber Knives and the Solstice by Acaso Knives designed by the great and powerful ooh, and maker of sharp knives, Andrew Demko. All right. Let me know what you had in your uh, in your pockets. Drop it down below. I always like to hear what you classy ladies and gentlemen carry. Um, next up, I want to show off what we're giving away tomorrow night for the September 2023 Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway. I call it the Seeing Double Civivi Package because two knives come in that package. First is the Kiwi Plus or Kiwi. I'm not sure what this thing is uh, actually how that's pronounced, but K-I-V-I. This beautiful little uh, front flipper Kiridashi uh, type thing from Civivi. You can, uh, I, I think with this knife, my favorite way to open it is the quote unquote reach around. I think it's hilarious that that's what people are calling it. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is the Kiridashi. It's sort of a reverse Tonto. Yes, I did say that. But I love that it's got a straight spine and then the upward angle with the tip uh, where it is because it's great for utility and all that. But if you have to use it as a last ditch weapon, it's a great Pakal style knife because because of that upward angle of the of the edge places the point in such a place that you don't have to torque your hand if you were to use this defensively uh, to get to get the uh, blade where you need or the point to be where you need to be. I know that is not this is made as a classy, cool, stylish, designy little lifestyle EDC, but I'm just telling you, in my twisted eye, it it flexes well into self-defense knife. So that is coming. And then by Justin Lundquist and Civivi, this beautiful little thing. Uh, what is this called? This is called the Lumi. That's right, the Lumi. Uh, front flipper with this gorgeous little... Uh, this also has a Japanese vibe to me. It looks like a little tiny Quaken or something. Uh, hollow ground blade. Uh, this is... I don't know, people. I don't have my readers. There's no way on earth I could read what steel this is. They they print it so small, which is fine. I don't like the billboarding, but uh, it's got some sort of steel here on this uh, sharp blade <laughs> or comp comprising this sharp blade. Beautiful gray G10, nice contouring, excellent action. Again, look at how small and light, but it it basically drops when you, when you engage that lock. Uh, deep carry pocket clip. Look at this cool package. That is a cool carry package. I mean, I could see someone carrying both of those at the same time. Someone who doesn't adhere to the knife junkie rules of uh, you can't carry two of the same brand knives or the same size. So if you're a rule breaker, a rebel, I'm a, rod uh, I'm a rebel, Dottie. If you are a rebel, this might be your thing. So anyway, join us over at Patreon. That is uh, a way you can help support the show. Um, there are several tiers of support at the gentleman junkie tier. You get, uh, entered automatically into a knife giveaway. And on the third Thursday of every month on Thursday night knives, we do the giveaway live with the wheel of destiny. It's a lot of fun. I love it. And, uh, it's my way of giving back. Now, those two knives, speaking of uh, paying it forward, as it were, uh, were donated to the channel by Dave of this old sword blade reviews a gentleman and a scholar and an owner of some incredible knives. All right, coming up on the Knife Junkie Podcast, Knife Life News. We're going to take a look at a new cool CRKT and then a cold steel we have all been waiting for is ready to drop. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Uh, if you're watching the show, did you get a look at that Chris Reeve knife, Sabenza 31, with the Tonto blade and the Madagascar ebony? Manage. I want that knife. I want that knife. But 
there are other things to do. So I'm trying to be responsible here. Let's talk about SE, SE's new fixed blade. It's called the Sencillo or Sencillo. I don't know if it's Spanish, it would be Sencillo, but it is a new um, uh, knife designed by Jeff Randall himself from, uh, you know, the guy who started SE. And, um, and he is the Randall in Rat, uh, Randall Adventure Training, Rat 1, Rat 2, that that stuff. Anyway, he just came out, or he's coming out. They are coming out with this new Sensilla. And I got to say, you know, it, it, the blade looks very, very essy to me, sort of a, um, a very utilitarian drop point. <clears throat> I got to say, the thing that's exciting to me about this is the handle. Uh, I love these kind of egg-shaped handles that... Uh, your your grip sort of fully in, encapsulates. Uh, I like them for two reasons. They feel really good in the hand, and they give you a, a lot of control. If they're not too rounded, this is nicely rounded, but you can also tell it's flat, uh, so it's not going to turn in your hand. But also, they make them more carryable. A smaller handle uh, with rounded, I'm always talking about the smaller handle with rounded uh, dimensions, really, uh, they're they inspire you to carry them more. And if you carry it more, you'll have it on you when you need it. Um, especially if you carry in the waistband or on the, on the belt, like in the front scout, like I've been carrying recently, uh, it's gotta be small lengthwise when you're there. And, and then also rounded, uh, especially in the waistband because you're dealing with, uh, we're not all six pack abs kind of guys. And sometimes you got a little extra there. You got to worry about, um, interfering with the knife handle. And if it's squared off or too long, going to be uncomfortable so this first version out uh, coming out is in a2 this is one thing we all love about se is that they adhere to some of the uh old school steels 1095 chief among them those are great fixed blade outdoor steels because of their toughness and their ease of sharpening and and their edge retention and their durability uh so coming out in a2 first then magna cut uh, and as Ben Schwartz of uh, Knife News said, in Magna Cut's effort to saturate the entire world with itself, uh, Essie, Essie uh, is crying uncle and going to a super steel for this, which is cool. You know, I, I like that. Um, you know, you don't see them doing that with their full lineup, but it's nice that they have a small EDC uh, going to that steel because a lot of people like to carry the small Essie fixed blades as their EDC knives. So take a look, uh, look for the Sensillo. It's not quite out yet, but it's uh, in the offing. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Another cool one uh, that I've just started to see out there. I saw Amber Combat. Uh, who was it? Um, uh, the, the knife um, woman, Amber, survival. Um, I can't remember her, her full name. She's awesome. I uh, subscribed to her on YouTube and she does a lot of shorts and she she just recently had this new CRKT Ken Onion collaboration. Very cool. Um, somehow I knew it was from Ken Onion, even though it does not look like a Ken Onion to me. Uh, to me, I always think of the curvy 90s designs, the leak and, and the. Um, the many, many curved knives, let's see the 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 zero tolerance ZT0200, the, the, those like a lot of curvy knives he made. This is a lot more straightforward. Uh, it's it's called the Redemption and it's inspired by uh, the the old West gambler and a cool knife. Indeed, I like or let's talk about it first in that it's got a four inch, four point two inch, I believe, or four point oh two inch Magna Cut. Uh, blade it's a dagger ground blade it's doesn't have double edges it could look that that blade fits entirely in the handle uh so so they they took it all the way there and then just just wouldn't wouldn't double edge it but maybe maybe if i ever get this i'll have someone do that but look at this thing they they use the crossbar lock deep deep carry pocket clip g10 handle uh and that coffin shaped handle uh steel bolsters apparently their crossbar lock is pretty pretty good so this knife overall looks looks like just about the most appeal. Oh, and USA made just about the most appealing CRKT I've seen in years. Uh, when they came out with that seven hundred and fifty dollar one with the that proof of concept uh, knife with the with the bolt deadbolt lock, the first time that deadbolt lock came out, it was that Icoma design, kind of a cool design, but seven hundred fifty bucks for a CRKT was not realistic. This is, I think, this retails at two fifty nine, uh, which for retail, 
and Magna Cut and USA Made and Ken Onion is not too bad. And then we all know, oh, 225 right there in front of me. Uh, but we know that when it gets to um, Blade HQ uh, or our favorite retailers, I should say Knife Center. Blade HQ is not my favorite retailer. Uh, but, you know, Knife Center um, or wherever else, um, it's going to be less. So this one looks cool. I, I would like to see more. I'd like to see more of this from you, CRKT, like uh, going into dad mode here. But, it, it, you know, it's nice to see what CRKT can do when they apply themselves. OK, next. Cold Steel Mayhem is ready to drop. I'm excited about this. I'm I'm nervous sighted. Let me say that I'm nervous sighted. And the nervous part is only because I feel like it's sort of a ham fisted design. Um, I, I, I like it. You know what? The. The 12 year old in me is crazy about this knife. And let me let me just let you know, the 12 year old in me has quite an influence. I mean, uh, so I'm not trying to say that this is a 12 year old's knife or that it's uh, but something about this design is so extra that it, it even has the 52 year old me looking like really, Bob. Uh, and then the 12 year old me is saying yes. And then so is all the other year old me's. So uh, I don't know what it is. I guess I'm just getting old and maybe more conservative than ever but uh then i got a chance to hold this at blade show and it i gotta say it changed my mind um i i'd been kind of looking down my nose at this for a while oh it's an in-house design oh oh it's a little clunky looking but then when i got it in the hand i i gotta say it is it is compelling it is if you if you know the feel of a six inch cold steel in your hand You'll know what this feels like, and you'll like it. Uh, that uh, that Atlas lock, I'm liking the Atlas lock. This is the first time I've experienced it. Uh, it does create quite a heavy guillotine. That's a that's a hell of a blade. And in this shot, it looks sort of um, hollow ground. The ones that I experienced at Blade Show were not hollow ground. Blade would be sweet, of course, but it would also lighten the load a little bit and maybe make that... Uh, that blade as it comes back into the handle, a little less menacing. I mean, I'm looking at it now. Jim's uh, Jim's volleying through these different angles. And I got to say, it is pretty cool. I don't know where I get off uh, kind of uh, not being excited about this knife, given the rest of my huge Cold Steel collection. So anyway, it's on the way. Uh, coming out first uh, in Aus 10. I shouldn't say first, but coming out in Aus 10 uh, in a more budget-friendly version. And then uh, G10 and S35 in a less budget-friendly version. As far as I'm concerned, I'm just going to stick to the OS 10. They do a great job with their heat treats. And what am I going to be using this for? You know, the, and I'm not sure S35 VN is the way to go for the upscale steel for a knife like this. I think for a knife like this, you should assume with a knife and a lock and a blade like this, you should assume someone might be doing a little bit of chopping. Let's go with 3V. Instead, and they do a lot of 3V at cold steel. So instead of that S35VN, which is a folder steel, and we're like, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I think 3V would, would be the smart choice. And then they could charge whatever they charge for 3V. All right. Lastly, in Knife Life News, a very compelling story in my book. Uh, this is Artisan Cutlery's new collaboration folder. We've been seeing a lot of uh, knife knife fluencers uh, showing the, the four different versions of this off on their channels. This is the new um, Artisan Cutlery BOA, and it's a collaboration with a young man named Jonathan Shaw. He's a Canadian knife maker who started making knives at... <clears throat> Let me hold the vomit. 13, 13. And this guy is now 17. And uh, this is his design that he is doing a Kickstarter with uh, with um, Artisan Cutlery and having four different versions of this made. This is the stippled boa. Uh, there are three others. But this guy is now 17, designed this beautiful knife, and he is closing down his shop called Triple Stripe Knives in Canada because... He is now going to serve his country in the armed forces there. How about that? I mean, what this this is a this is a st seems like on paper a stand up young man. I I love his story because uh, he knew what he was into at an early age and went for it. And he's been making knives for four years. He's accomplished, uh, you know, creating a business and a and a shop. And then 
now he's doing a collaboration that is so highly people are so impressed with this knife and it, it is beautiful to look at here he is look at this guy this young dude jonathan shaw 17 going to volunteer for uh going to going to uh, sacrifice for his country man come back after you do that and and pick up where you left off man this, this is uh this is cool stuff and uh, you're a stand up young man and others need to to look to you and emulate some some of what you got I appreciate that. All right, coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, in the state of the collection, we're going, oh, here it is. Uh, Jim has the Kickstarter up. It is fully funded, but it's open until October. So get on, get in on it. You can see the three diff the four different versions here. I know that one is called the, uh, the Stippled. That's the middle one. And then the one right next to it is called the Rustic. And then I don't know what the two on the outer ends are, but they're fancy. Or they, 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 uh, they span the gamut from fancy to you know every day but they are very cool and uh definitely worth supporting no doubt okay now let's get to the uh state of the collection but before we do let me just say uh like i mentioned before we do have this uh patreon um uh you know you can join us on patreon and the only thing i want to go back to is i have such great post interview conversations uh with everyone i interview they come back on for 10, 15 minutes, and uh, we cover stuff that I haven't been able to get to uh, for time or things that maybe I don't think are appropriate for the far and wide, but for the for the smaller group of patrons. Um, so it's an interesting thing. If you're interested in that, you want to hear more from the people I interview on the show, uh, go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon and check it out, or you can scan that QR code. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit thenifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash save on gas. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Okay, so it came this week, uh, and I'm so excited. This, of course, you know what this is. This is one of those beautiful, I love these things, beautiful leather uh, Jack Wolf knives slips that comes with every Jack Wolf knife except for the gunslinger. Uh, this beauty... Okay, what does this contain? You know what it contains because I'm always the last. Oh, there, there it is, the Pioneer Jack. And what were you just complaining about, Bob? Nothing. I'm going to be quiet. I live in a place of high congestion, so my mail is slow. And I get to watch other people open up their Jack Wolf knives, and, and, uh, and I wait. Poor Bob, poor Bob. All that put aside, thank you so much, Ben. This is a gift from Ben Belkin of Jack Wolf Knives, and I'm very, very grateful. Also, love help getting the word out about his amazing knives, be they slip joints or bolster locks. Uh, but this one is based on the Sodbuster style knife or the um, single-bladed Farmer Jack, like the GEC Bullnose I was showing off before. But he's got the Ben Belkin twist. He's got the he's got the modernized angular handle. He's got uh, a large. Let's see. Let's get that in focus there. Thank you. Uh, a I'm thanking the camera. A large bolster here that is a um, what do you call it? Like a Barlow bolster comes about a third the way down the handle, giving extra strength. Three flutes as usual. A uh, nice thick liners and bolster all uh, integral. And then this blade, this beautiful straight bla straight backed blade with that gorgeous swedge running near the length of the top. Um, this is different from other Jack Wolf knives in that right up front uh, at the tip of the blade, it's nice and thick. Look at how, how thick that tip stays. Most Jack Wolf knives at the very tip are super thin, and that's great for fine work and slicing and stuff but this is a sort of harder use uh knife based on a farmer's knife so it's going to be a little bit more stout and i like that this is a showing like you can feel it thin 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 and then maintains its thickness right up until about that 
last eighth of an inch uh, taper towards the point. And then, of course, Ultim. Ultim is, is, the, is what you're looking at here. That's the handle material. Now, this knife comes in two different titaniums, a black, all black uh, knife with the jigged handle, and then a <clears throat> sort of plain Jane style, uh, plain blasted titanium, and then carbon fiber, and this Ultim. And the Ultim here, um, I was looking it up. I was curious about it. Like this flavor of the month, Ultim, I like it because I love the color. Not everyone likes that sort of dark yellow, but I love it, especially next to uh, dark gray. I love that color combo. Uh, but anyway, um, Ultim is a super high heat resistant um, thermoplastic. I mean, this thing is uh, really, you know, I was looking it up, its properties on its website and it's good to go. It's quite stout. It can, it can maintain uh, its shape in really high temperatures. It is, uh, um, what do you call it? Tough, uh, impact resistant, a uh, really interesting material. And <clears throat> you can get it at various levels of uh, transparency or translucency. This is totally transparent. So you can see the, uh, the screws, the, the body screws underneath. Just a really beautiful knife. And then, of course, you've got the Jack Wolf Knives walk and talk. The Jack Wolf Knives action here is just awesome. So for a knife that you're going to do maybe heavier chores with because it's a... Uh, because it's got a stouter blade and all that, uh, you're going to want a, a really stout lock like this. So I like I like how heavy the walk and talk is on this. Uh, you can pinch it open. It's not as easy to pinch open because of this swedge. Now, on most Jack Wolf knives, it's a full height hollow grind, and that grind comes all the way up to the spine, which gives you essentially uh, a, a lip on both sides, a sharp lip that you can pull uh, even if even if it's this far buried in the handle but in this case there's that beautiful swedge running running along the top of the blade and so that swedge breaks the the uh, sharp edges of the full height hollow grind so it makes it a little less easy uh, to pinch open it can still be done but on this I keep finding myself just kind of going to the nail neck to get it started Awesome knife. I'm going to put it up to the uh, mic for a sec so you can hear. So you can hear that walk and talk. Let's see. You know, you can fidget with anything. So, you know, um, of course, we think of our, our fancy modern folders as the, as, the only, as, as the most fidgety, and granted they are. I would say, but you can pitch it with a cold steel uh, axis lock or a, a cold steel um, triad lock, lock back. You can fidget with one of these. You can fidget with just about anything. Um, okay, so what's next? Uh, I want to show off these two knives sent to me by Ed Saul. Ed Saul is a knife maker who was uh, a contestant, a, for, a finalist on Forged in Fire and a friend of our good friend, Byron Kennedy. And uh, Byron introduced me to this gentleman and uh, he, he reached out and sent me these two knives. Uh, the first one is a field knife. That's what I'm calling it. It's a beautiful. He also does really nice leather work, by the way. Uh, but it's a field knife in this beautiful drop sheath that it locks nicely into. Super thin ground, uh, convex edge, very, very sharp. Uh, zips through paper like it's not there. Uh, I haven't done anything else with this knife uh, because it's not mine, and I don't want to. I don't want to mar it at all. But really nice, full height, hollow, uh, flat grind here, and a handle that, if you look at it in cross section, or if you look at it from the top or bottom, is wasp wasted. So it really locks your your fingers in there, and it's a really really sure grip. Uh, this material he used here is cool. I like it. It's kind of retro. It looks like something you might see on an old slip joint or an old uh, field knife. Like, uh, hi. Uh, so I really like this. And he's got the um, the spine is 90 degrees. You could definitely throw sparks with this. 
And uh, just a great overall field knife, handmade by Ed Salt. Here, let me show you his maker's mark here. Let's see. There it is. Saul. That means sun in Spanish. Nice little uh, bead here made of the same material that the handle is, is made of. And then this other knife he sent is a collaboration with uh, Tim Hunt, TM Hunt Knives. And this thing is called, um, creatively called the Brain Shovel. <laughs> it's just, I like the name. What can I say? Uh, beautiful, beautiful leather sheath. First of all, let's just take a look at this sheath. Uh, single welt sheath with a fat, you know, fat leather hide here on all three layers. Beautifully molded to this knife. And you can see the the gorgeous wood handle here peeking out. Now let's take a look at this. You can you can take this little fob here and help extract the knife, but it is a different kind of push dagger. The brain shovel is. This is a double-edged, beautiful spear point double-edged blade. This is uh, made from uh, Apex. Oh, let's see, where is it? Um, well, hang on, I'm, I'll get to that in a, in a quick second. It's made of a special steel um that is that has some special qualities it's a super uh refined uh, powder metallurgy steel that has like super fine grains it can be forged and um there's more information on it and i will pull that up in a second um i had it and my phone closed up but i'll get that in a second Beautiful, uh, the whole point of this, well, sorry, beautiful wood handle and the look of the steel is pretty incredible. Uh, but the 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 big thing in the room here is the um, the design of it. The design is a um, push dagger, but it's set up differently. What am I getting at here? Let me show you. Here's a here's a more traditional style push dagger. This one from Stroop Knives, where you are grabbing and putting that blade between your fingers. Okay, so that's the traditional setup. Some people don't like that. And uh, so Ed, Saul, and Tim Hunt created a push dagger where your, your finger goes through it. So it's kind of like a knuck. Uh, it's like a knuck, a bladed knuck. But I personally wouldn't use it so much like this. This spreads my, my fingers aren't that big. This spreads my fingers out a little bit. Not that hitting something soft would hurt with this, but I like it like this. I, I'm kind of comfortable with it in my hand like this, kind of like I would hold the um, the uh, Pinkerton arrow uh, broadhead, kind of like that. Um, this this feels really good in hand. It's got beautiful fit and finish. Um, you got nice crowned area here, and everything is radius so uh, so nicely and comfy. There's Tim Hunt's. Um, there is Tim Hunt's maker's mark, and then here is Ed Saul's maker mark, maker's mark. Okay, I realize uh, this is this is. Uh, I'm not going to have the information on that steel right now uh, because I kind of lost it. I was going to read something from their website, uh, but I am going to be doing a full close-up video of these knives and talk about. Uh, and talk about Mr. Soul's work here. And I will talk all about the special steel that, that went into making this beautiful thing. Uh, the brain shovel, uh, interesting name. I gotta, sh I gotta say, um, I gotta get this out. I, I, I have a, I have an issue with naming conventions, uh, that are too on the nose. Yes. You could definitely shovel out a brain with this w without, without much, uh, difficulty. But the problem I have is, uh, two things. I like cognitive dissonance. I'd rather call that the petunia than the brain shovel. And then I also think that if you ever, heaven forbid, have to use it for self-defense, and then you come before a jury or a judge and they, and they mention the name of it, it doesn't help. Let me just put it that way. Uh, having the Kaiser assassin involved in a court case, even though it's a little puny three inch, you know, flipper knife that it couldn't be further from an assassin's knife. It just doesn't look good. So that's my only comment.
about that but just a beautiful knife and a gorgeous sheath man i am so impressed with the sheath work here too this leather work is killer of course you can drop that in your pocket and put this over the over the side and the only thing that's going to peek out is that no one's going to know what it is very cool Okay, lastly, uh, Camillus, you know Camillus Knives, uh, New York legendary knife company, um, reached out to me. They're selling two knives at Home Depot. And the funny thing is, is the day they reached out to me, I had gone to Home Depot. And of course, I always go to see what kind of knives they have. And I saw both of these knives and I was like, oh, those are new. And one of them definitely got me interested. Uh, it's this first one. And so... That day they reached out and offered to send it to me. It was it was a nice little bit of uh, serendipity. Okay, this one is called the Camillus Dominator. And the first thing you will notice is that this is the Daryl Ralph Dominator, his custom knife. Daryl Ralph, may he rest in peace, is uh, a legend in the tactical folding knife world. And uh, he's been on this show. And uh, he was a really, really nice guy to talk with and interview. And uh, I remember he sent uh, both me and Jim these beautiful copper pens. I keep, them, I keep them here. This is one of my main pens still. This is the pen that he sent me and Jim. Um, Jim has one also is what I mean. So very generous guy, very warm guy. And I love his knife designs. He's famous for his Expendables knife, the knife that in the first Expendables that uh, Jason Statham carried and, and uh, threatened the abusive uh, guy who beat up his girlfriend with. You know, remember he pops the pops the base uh, the uh, basketball. It's sort of in his expository scene. Let's get to know who Jason Statham is in this movie. And he is 100% badass, and he uses a five-inch uh, Daryl Ralph to, to, to pop a basketball. And he has a really corny line. Uh, but anyway, so this is what they're selling through Home Depot. I, all of that to say, I think it is so cool, A, that, that Daryl Ralph's designs are out there uh, besides, you know, now that the customs aren't being made. So um his work is continued uh, is continuing to be honored, but it's also cool that it's it's getting into the hands of non knife people. This is being sold to non knife people at Home Depot who just need a knife to work with. And look at what they're getting. They're getting this beautiful design. Uh, so let's talk about the steel. It's sort of an anonymous stainless steel. I haven't been able to find what it is. Uh, it's probably 420. Uh, I'm guessing. It's it's got titanium, some sort of titanium coating that's supposed to make it harder than it would be without it. Um, I'm not sure how that works because they say on the website, let's see, let me see if I can get some focus. There we go. Because they say on the Camillus website that the titanium bonding makes it uh, harder than it would be if untreated. And I don't know if they mean harder than if it were unheat treated or harder if it wasn't treated with the titanium. But anyway, this is, you know, you're not buying this knife for its high edge retention and it's super steel. You're buying this to, to work with it and work with it with abandon and resharpen it quickly at night when you're done, you know. Um, but you get some of the, besides the uh, pedigree design, you get some really great features in a $20 knife that you're buying at Home Depot. You get that kind of drop shut action. And yes, there's no play. You get that drop shot. I mean, this is, you know, flipped 50 times. And you've got this incredible drop shot action pretty much out of the box, um, which is cool, you know, that ball bearings have made it to the pivots of all knives now. Now there's no excuse, really. There's no excuse for um, speed safe, except for the fact that it sells and people love it, I guess. But I mean, you know, we can get amazing. Uh, what was custom action 10 years ago on a $20 Camillus at Home Depot. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the thing I don't like about this is this flipper tab. Now, it gives you great purchase, and it would be awesome. I have a feeling they made it like this for guys wearing gloves. But it does interrupt. It does really get in the way. This is a small finger choil here. And even without gloves and even with slender fingers, it's in the way. You know, this pokes into your finger like this should be flat. 
like this or something. If I were using this, I would grind that down. If this were going to be my, you know, if I were going to use this on a job site, I'm sure there's some way on that job site to grind just a little bit of that nubbin off and then you're good to go. Uh, but overall, I think this is a really a great way to spend 20 bucks at Home Depot. I got to say, uh, FRN handle, stainless steel liners, great action. Um, I All of that is to say I haven't used it yet. Uh, this weekend, I hope to do some videos where I just get to hang out outside and I'll cut some stuff with it. And by stuff, I mean sisal, rope, and wood. That's pretty much all I got. But um, I want to see how that how long it takes to dull that blade I'm sure it won't be too long but that's okay you know that's what you expect from a 20 dollar um knife that you're buying at home depot you're going to have to resharpen it but chances are you're a handy person anyway uh and there you go i'm just thrilled that they're making this really really great design in a home depot model in a more pedestrian model pedestrian that sounds like a disc but i don't mean it that way i just mean something that is uh, every day so uh, any 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 joe can walk him in, into a home depot and come out with a knife designed by a famous custom knife designer i like it and i like that shot okay next from camillus thank you by the way camillus for sending this to me we're going to do a giveaway of this knife and the next knife the this is called the swedge and apparently it's a pretty famous knife, a uh, working knife by Camillus. Um, they're also sending the, uh, selling this at Home Depot. The first blush, it looks like a Mora. It's got that sort of uh, plastic molded drop sheath. Really nice. You got thumb push-offs. It's ambidextrous, so it doesn't matter which way you drop it in there. Uh, I don't think. Uh, let's see. Okay, so there's the knife. Um, let's see if we... If it goes in backwards. Yeah, it can go in ba backwards. Uh, it's it it's at home this way, but it will drop in there and and lock in there this way also. Um, so if you're working and you don't want to worry, I mean, you just got to get it out of your hands. You don't have to fuss about which way it's going in there. Okay, obviously a work knife. This looks very at home at Home Depot. Uh, you've got this really nice molded frn handle it feels like it's got a tiny bit of rubberization in there but maybe not maybe not uh but it's a full tang according to the website and you can tell because it's got some serious weight in this handle and then it's got a, a a point for pounding so that pommel you can you can mallet it or or hit with a hammer but probably be better off with a mallet um to use this chisel point now this chisel point is interesting because it's not very sharp um and and not being a construction guy construction worker i'm not sure if that is left dull and then if you want to you sharpen that or if there is some use common use on a construction site for a dull chisel uh, you could definitely scrape with this. I mean, it's not dull. Like that is a fine, uh, that is a uh, very fine, um, what am I trying to say? 90 degree angle, but there is a surface there instead of an edge. So you could scrape with it, but if you really wanted this to be a chisel, you would have to sharpen that that front. Okay, so the rest of the blade is uh, pretty sharp. Um, in cross section, it is a chisel but it is set like a wedge so in other words um both sides are ground to a wedge but you can see that chisel tip uh, on the back you have a quarter inch wide file i mean the whole blade is a quarter inch wide and this is all a file here so kind of a really nice multi-use um job site or or working you know like toolbox knife and then not for nothing but you do still have a bit of a tip here um so you could be getting into packages with that this is not exactly 90 degrees even if it were you still have that that point there so you can still cut into stuff even though it looks like uh kind of a cleaver also that titanium bonded uh stainless steel um they did stipulate that this is 420 that's why i um 
that's why I uh, thought that maybe the other knife, uh, the folder was too. Cool little feature here that you see. You can just put it right on your work belt. No problem. All right. That's from Camillus. Let's get to dangerous curves here. Um, and let's let's blast through these. These are knives you've seen before, but it was occurring to me uh, that I'm always talking about the Warren Cliff and how much I love that straight edge. Um, but um, with this office in turmoil, uh, I, I have a lot of boxes around. And so I started testing some of my more curvy knives on them. And uh, there's only one of them here that's uh, that that's a little different. But uh, I was amazed at how incredibly these things cut. And so I wanted to highlight them. And we'll do that briefly here. OK, so first up, this is new to me, uh, but an old knife in the lineup. This is the Cold Steel Steel Tiger. And this is the one that inspired this little list here uh, because I, I just randomly pulled this out on a lark and took a swipe in forward grip like this at a cardboard box. And I could not believe the devastation it wrought. Uh, what happens is that blade pierces. When you use this knife in uh, forward saber grip like this, this is a, a big five inch karambit if you're not looking. When you hold it in forward grip like this and you swipe at something, it's first stabbing. That tip is going in like this, that first three inches, two and a half inches is a stab. And then as you continue with your swipe, it turns into a gutting slash. This is just utterly horrific. This this blade can... can... So this is a very dangerous knife is what I'm getting at. And if you have this, um, I highly recommend you get the trainer. Um, I do not have the trainer, but I'm not uh, trying to use this like a karambit. I'm not flipping it around and doing all that stuff. But if you have any any aims of doing that please get the trainer and it looks just like this it's weighted just like this but it's all plastic and the, the tip is a big ball because even a plastic trainer of this and i have the uh F fgx version of this is gonna cut you it's gonna stab you so uh do get one of those look at this tip all right, so that is the Steel Tiger by Cold Steel. Next up, a custom knife from a dude I've been following for a while. He does a weekly drop of really interesting knives. Uh, some I love more than others, um, and then some are just mind-blowing. And uh, this one is the Draug. This is from Rib, Rib Splitter Knives. I love the name, too. Rib Splitter Knives. Great sheath also, but this is the Draug. And obviously, it is a, a, a uh, pickal style knife. So this is a knife that you grip in your hand with your thumb capping the top of the pommel and the tip down and the edge in. And it is for gross motor motion. It is for adrenaline dump self-defense style uh, techniques here. So the edge is in and the, and the point is down. You got that clawing motion. People talk about karambits, which I love, like the tiger claw, for instance. They say, oh, it's just like a cat's claw, you know, just like, yeah, but cats don't have their claws facing forward and they don't do this motion with it. They have their claws facing down and in and they grab and they pull. So really the real tiger's claws and the real cat's claws are these um, call style knives. So, uh, yeah, made, made weekly by hand. I think he's in Pennsylvania. I tried to have him on the show. Never worked out. We'll try again sometime. Uh, but these are forged uh, beauties, and uh, I just think they're really cool. And the curves, the overall lines of this are just wicked cool. I just became a Bostonian right there. All right, next up is another, <coughs> excuse me. Next up is another Pakal style knife that I love, man. Fell in love with the whole genre with this knife. This is the JB Knife and Tool Ditch Pick. Now, this knife uh, is really thin. That's one sixteenth of an inch thin, wickedly thin. That's like it's like cheap steak knife thin. Um, and the steel is really uh, well tempered 1095 blade steel. Talking to Brian from JB Knife and Tool, he said they put these uh, ditch models. The ditch models are the are all of his models in sixteenth of an inch are called the ditch and then whatever. Um, but they they torture test these because they're so thin. They want to make sure they're durable. And uh, these pass with flying colors uh, with 
with the flexibility and toughness, uh, which you need on something this thin. Uh, Double-edged Pickal style. This one, uh, I think this was the first run where he offered them either bayonet double edge, where the double edge starts here, or full double edge. I had to go full double edge, even though, you know, being a shallow guy, I like the way the bayonet style looks better, but I figured, why just go halfway if the op if you have the option to go all the way? So very dangerous curves on this wicked little thin, slicey, nasty little last ditch knife. Okay, from the tiny to the quite large. The Odin Wolf Sow Catcher. Now, in my notes to Jim, I called it the Hog Catcher, but I remembered later it's actually the Sow Catcher. Uh, no big deal. You'll find it uh, when you go to Odin Wolf on uh, Amazon. They make a couple of different models, and I, I think they're really cool. But this one, my God, the blade is just gorgeous and stunning. And it reminds me, thank you, sir. And it reminds me of Sting. Uh, um, Bilbo Baggins' sword from the animated Hobbit from when I was a kid in the 70s. Uh, and I loved his sword um, in that movie. And this has that. It's a wasp-waisted, um, uh, full-bellied dagger. So wasp-waisted, I meaning it comes in here um, real thin, or thinner, I should say, down by the Ricasso, and then widens out dramatically uh, towards the tip, and then, of course, tapers in at the tip. This does a couple of things. Uh, this is, if if this is for uh, sow catching and, and hog hunting, it's a thrusting weapon. It's a weapon that you use uh, to stab into the heart of a raging beast. Uh, so having this, uh, these two wide bellies here make a really wide wound channel, and, uh, and, and make it a devastating thruster. But then uh, these curves here, these recurves, make for a really, really effective slasher too. Something that you don't see, and chopper, something you don't see much on a double-edged dagger style knife. So the Odin Wolf Sow Catcher, definitely dangerous curves on this one. Now this next one is a dangerous knife. But the curves aren't what makes it necessarily dangerous. They are just what make it beautiful and iconic. And I don't use that word lightly like MTV. Everything's iconic on MTV. I don't know if you've ever watched that, that channel. Anyway, okay, so uh, here is the SOG Super Bowie. And what curves am I talking about here? You know what I'm talking about. Those double peaks, the, the, the mountains here on the top of the blade. I love knives that have that, that double peak. And of course, that came from SOG. Now, you could argue uh, that it has a purpose. I'm not sure what that would be. I mean, staring at this beautiful, dazzling blade right now, I could see if you were using this in a thrust and you went beyond this first peak, um, you could do what we were talking about before, make a, a bigger, wider, nastier um, wound with this knife. I'm not sure if that's why that was designed that way. Uh, but I do know that on this iconic blade shape, this SOG Bowie blade shape, those curves are um, integral to the to the design and to the um, legend. So I had to include them, include this knife in this list, uh, not just go all karambit and pick all. I love this knife. The SOG Super Bowie, I'd love to get the regular one, the six inch. This is the seven inch. Um, just to get the classic, the one that was in Terminator 2. That's the first time I saw that knife. Okay, next up is from is a custom. This is from Blackrock Knives. This is the Monkey Thumper. And the curve I'm thinking about on this is the overall curve uh, because it has, if you just look at the blade and forget that I had it double-edged, it just looks like your standard drop point blade. Uh, maybe, it's a maybe it's a drop point harpoon. But then when you add it to the handle, it becomes more of a kukri because of how the um, the straight edge and then the belly are presented at an angle to the hand. Now, when I use this, uh, when I hold this in a saber grip, I never use the, um, I'm just, I just don't like using the ring th for the pinky uh, pretty much in any knife, but I find that the ring on pretty much any knife makes a great pommel. So I'll hold it like this and, or, or like this, and you get this amazing recurve effect just from the angle, overall angle, this overall curve from the tip to the pommel, you get this curve 
that presents the blade makes it super super effective on a cut on a slash and even on a thrust because as you do thrust it pushes in and widens everything out so that's the monkey thumper and yes indeed it does have dangerous curves <clears throat> there was a place right down the street from my brother when he lived in manhattan it was a place of ill repute and it was called dangerous curves uh next up i never went in there I don't know about my brother, but I never went in there. Okay, next up is from uh, Mike, uh, Michael Knight. It's not from Michael Knight. It's from Jason Knight. Uh, Jason Knight and Elements and Fox, uh, Fox Cutlery. The, the curves are all over this thing. First of all, just like the Monkey Thumper, you have this overall curve, um, which presents the blade at a downward angle, accelerating all cuts and uh, enhancing thrusts. Uh, but in this case, it's also a Kukri blade. So you got you've got those two curves, that recurve. So this knife, uh, especially for a folder, is just uh, really devastatingly effective on a slash. Um, but let's not forget, kukris are great for thrusting. We always talk about them as choppers and slashers, which this is awesome. But also, that tip is right in the right place for me to thrust without having to change my wrist angle. So the curves here that I really think are effective are is the overall curve and the blade curve but also you have this awesome bookended um curve here in the um handle that just locks it right in next up from emerson the emerson elvia yes another pick haul but this one um mm, this is one of the first ones i fell in love with and partially because it's an emerson but also because of how audaciously that curved knife is uh, angled off the handle. Um, not all Pikals are equal. Even if you look at the Draug I had out, uh, this is relatively straight by comparison. Um, see how much the Emerson reaches up and out. Uh, and what that does is accentuate <laughs> the effectiveness of a punch. I can do a back fist or like a hammer fist, and that point is right where it needs to be. Instead of having to like change my angle to get the knife to fit, bang. So that sort of uh, outward and upward reaching point um, makes this Emerson, I I would argue, more effective than a, than a straighter pick haul. Now at this point, I have I, I have a feeling we're just picking nits and and really getting into the weeds with it. But uh, this is all you know. We speak in hypotheticals here anyway, and uh, I think hypothetically this is probably the most dangerous of my pacals, especially uh, my folding pacals. All right. Penultimate here by one of my favorite uh, makers, designers, and just people in general uh, is Dirk Pinkerton's Razorback in Magna in LMAX. Um, this is a very thin hollow ground, double-edged, um, Bowie, Hell's Bells Bowie and Kanjar inspired knife. So it's a bit of a um, a mix up, not mix up. What do they call it? Mash up uh, with the with the different inspirations. But to me, it really uh, it really calls out Middle Eastern knife because it's that curve, that upward curve. And then the fact that both edges are sharp. That's one of the things I love about the Kanjar and the and the other um, knives from the Middle East is is their unapologetic curves and and edges how they edge everything you know both sides of the blade even if it's even if it's a radical curve um but this one to me is uh just about the perfect fighting knife i mean there are a lot of great fighting knives in my collection but to me this one hits a, a real balance of simple comfortable perfect sized handle not too big it'd be hard to to use that pommel uh, to to leverage it out of my hand, it'd be hard to do anyway because I'd be stabbing you and slashing you. But um, it's perfect uh, size for my hand for that reverse grip, and <clears throat> it's really light and perfectly balanced right there at the uh, first finger. That's where you want a fighting knife to balance. And man, this thing is awesome. So uh, definitely some dangerous curves right here on this. Dirk Pinkerton Razorback. But I got to say, this last one probably has to take the cake, right? 
Am I right? There's a bunch of dangerous curves on this one. Yes, if you're only listening, you heard it right. Uh, you heard this open up. It's the Tylight X, uh, XL or 6-inch uh, Chris. This is the signature Lynn Thompson uh, version. And man alive, is it dangerous. You've got uh, a, an OS 10 blade with one, two, three peaks and one, two, three valleys on this blade and one nasty downward facing hawk build tip. Any Chris worth its weight ends with the point going down in the front and not trailing and then you'll know it's uh it's good to go so the the benefits of all of those curves not only uh are in the slash and the cut it's like a big bread knife if you if you're swiping and you hit right there and you pull those curves across the skin as you uh as you slash it that it's just going but i like big serrations it's just going ever deeper into the skin and then you're ending with that nasty tip um, but also on a thrust, it, it continues to widen as you push in. So, uh, very, very deadly design. I know people tend to think Chris's are just there to look cool. Uh, but, but this is really, uh, the, the science of pain and, and butchery here, uh, that, that came up with this. So I shouldn't say butchery. I should say warfare. Um, so there you go. This is my, uh, these are just some highlights from my collection of the dangerous curves I have all around me. Uh, some of them on the wall are, are, are the worst of them because they're big and curved. So uh, let me know what you think about that. Uh, do you like curved knives or are you uh, in a Warncliffe phase as I've been for such a long time? Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, check us out on Sunday's uh, um, interview show. And then, of course, tomorrow night, Thursday Night Knives, uh, live 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be giving away uh, the Civivi Am I Seeing Double Two Pack? So join us then. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.